These Samoan workers are bringing not only their harmonies, but their much needed picking skills to this Hawke's Bay orchard. They are among the 11,500 seasonal workers brought into the country this year under the government's recognised seasonal employer scheme. The RSE scheme was devised 11 years ago to bring men and women from nine Pacific nations to New Zealand to work in our gardens, vineyards and orchards. We seriously struggle to get enough workers to, to come into our industry and, and, and the way the growth is and uh, where, where we are now, there's no way we're going to get enough Kiwis to come and do this work. Employing the seasonal workers without actually providing them their rights at work is actually undermining the market rate. For the Pacific Islanders, the goal can be as simple as a storm-proof house. The second get off the roof, roof of the house. So that's why we need to build a new home for my family to see. Will it be a better home than before? Yeah. Why? How will it be better? Because it's uh, built by a concrete. The RSC scheme provides labour to New Zealand horticulture but it is also an unorthodox form of international aid to the Pacific. It exists to support development, um, development aims in the Pacific and uh, provide valuable remittances and, and the transfer of skills back into the Pacific. And those workers are able to spend between three to seven months a year in New Zealand. RSC workers can access tailored training courses when they're in New Zealand and they can use the skills they build in those courses and at work to then start businesses when they go back home. I have an aim to come here. I like to build my house yeah, and uh, help my family back home because they not work, they don't have a job. I had a, a brother and sister from the Solomon Islands out here working for me for about five years and now they, they don't need me because now they've got a cocoa plantation back in the Solomon Islands. So for me that's, that's some satisfaction. I've got Ni Vanuatu that doesn't come out here anymore because he's now got a fishing fleet. So I love the fact that they're now being able to be sustainable in their own right. But studies question its effectiveness as foreign aid because, unlike traditional development assistance, the RSC scheme doesn't target villages that really need it. The difficulty is that each time those partnerships are established, they also can become quite exclusive. And so the, there's another village which is just up the road, which misses out. Dr Dennis Ruckel has extensively researched the RSC scheme and its effects on the Solomon Islands. And there's still a role for those targeted programs that are aimed at the poorest of the poor and the REC doesn't actually um, do that as well as some have claimed. We've been over to Samoa and seen the difference that we've made over there, um, employing them here. Um, they're not living in Farleys anymore, they're living in brick homes. Every year we sponsor a uh, container to go back and they're taking home from New Zealand what they need. So they actually spend a significant portion of the money that they earn in New Zealand. What do they take back? Um, initially it was things like tables and chairs and wood to build houses and stuff like that, but now it's TVs and fridges and, and um, washing machines and, and, and kitchen gear and stuff to make their life more pleasurable. New Zealand wages go a long way in the third world, but what sacrifices must the Pacific Islanders make to earn their money? It's actually a form of threat. So they become like an indentured worker you are exclusive to work for that particular employer and if ever you complain, they will be sent back home. 